Hello everyone and welcome to February 2024's reading vlog. It is the shortest month of the year, even with that extra leap year day, so I panicked and I started two books right away. So the first book that I'm reading is called A Long Time Dead by Samara Breger. It is about the main character, Poppy Cavendish. She was a former sex worker in the 1850s, I believe, who subsequently gets turned into a vampire by one of these older ancient vampire women. And she has a sort of underling friend named Roisin, who is helping her transition into becoming a vampire. The beginning of that book, uh, wow, it hits you really hard with just vulgarity and craziness, and the writing style is very odd. I can't screenshot um, the app that I'm reading the book on, but I told this to one of my friends and she was appalled. Um, Poppy says that um, she's, you know, thicker. She's a full-bodied character, but she says that her clients like that and that one of them even described her entire body feeling like a boob. I don't think anyone wants to hear that ever, yet she was flattered by it. That then follows up with her worrying that since vampires can't eat food, she's wondering if she can still swallow at the end of sessions. <laughs> So that immediately brought me right back into, fine, this is just going to be a crazy story. It actually was very funny. So I am a certain ways into that book so far, and it reads very much like fan fiction in that it's very dialogue and character driven rather than action and plot, which is something I usually don't mind. And so far, I've been really liking the interactions between Roisin and Poppy. I like their um, conflicting moralities and even their conflicting ways that they talk. I love when characters have their own voices. I hate in books when everyone talks the exact same. It's so infuriating. And the second book that I'm reading is for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster, and I am reading Beloved by Toni Morrison. I'm only about a quarter of the way through that book, and I will talk more about it in my vlog. But the writing style was very, very hard to get into, but I believe I'm used to it now. It's very, like, it's like, it's like someone's thought process. It's not rambly per se, it's all very tight and contained, but it's quick from going from one descriptor to the next, and the language is very vague and kind of flowery and a little bit hard, but once you get into it, you get used to it. And so far, the story is very upsetting, but it is also very compelling, and there is aspects of magical realism which I'm really intrigued by. So that is my update for now. Stay tuned for what I continue to read and choose to read next.
sometimes we try hairstyles that don't work, but we're just gonna keep it like this. So I have finished three books since I last updated you. So I have finished Beloved by Toni Morrison, and I'm going to give that book two stars. I will talk about it more in my video dedicated to the poster, but it was just a little bit hard to follow and hard to resonate, but it is still a very powerful and unique story, and I highly recommend it. I also finally finished A Long Time Dead by Samara Breger, and I'm giving that book four stars. I thought it was a very interesting story about a um, vampire couple who is trying to kill the vampire sire that has ruined their and their friends' lives, and it was just very, very interesting. There was a lot going on in it, and as I said before, it read very fanfic -y, but I liked the aspects of human connection and talking. The book is mostly conversation, and yes, a lot of the time they're arguing over the same things like morals and religion and whether or not they're angry with each other or regret anything that they've done, but that's very human and very interesting and I really, really liked it. I also really liked that each character had their own voice. Nobody spoke exactly the same. I think I'm getting tired of that because of, you know, the Joss Whedonification of culture, everything has to be a reference, everything has to be nerd speak, everything has to be meta, and everyone talks exactly the same despite all being different characters. So I can really appreciate that this book had each character have their own voice. It had excellent queer representation as well, and I feel like this is a very um, Vampire Chronicles adjacent type story where they have a lot of similar themes going on with their vampires and their characters, except this book had way more women, so kudos to this book for that. I think I really enjoyed it. I might need a little bit more time thinking about it, but ultimately, at the beginning I was quite shocked, but as I got used to it and the language, I found myself really enjoying this book. And finally, I started, read, and finished I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This is an autobiographical work about Jeanette's relationship with her narcissistic, overbearing, and emotionally abusive mother, who um, ultimately encouraged her into child acting, encouraged her into an eating disorder, and ultimately just ruined any of her chances of having a normal and comfortable life. Jeanette talks about her relationship to her mother, how initially she was devoted to her and very people-pleasing, and her life was essentially sort of like just defined by trying to make her mother happy in any capacity. As young as like six years old, when she started child acting, she then talks about her time with Nickelodeon. It's very minor compared to what she does um, discussing her mother, but her descriptions of the creator and the other people she had to work with under Nickelodeon shows, once again, that Nickelodeon is a pretty vile company, at least when he was running it at the time, and I hope no one is currently facing that right now. This book has a lot of dark and horrific things that occur into it, a lot of instances of abuse, and a lot of discussions about eating disorders, but Jeanette McCurdy is a fantastic writer. I know that this book was originally a one-woman show that she performed, and oh my god, I bet that was a stunning piece of work. She is so clear and concise in her writing. Her writing's very simple. This is a very quick read, but it is effective. It is a gut punch sometimes to read a sentence, and you just laugh in disbelief because you're like, holy shit, what else could possibly go wrong? And more and more goes wrong. It's awful. But I really, really, really hope that Jeanette is in a better place, and I hope she's happy, and I hope nothing but the best for her, and I hope she never acts again. I hope she gets to fulfill all of what she wants to achieve, and this was just an incredible look into her life. It was powerful. It was funny at times, even though, goodness, it was very dark about it, and this is excellently written. I'm giving this five stars. However, I don't know if I could ever reread it again, and it might be one of my favorite autobiographies, but yeah, this was just excellent. I highly encourage everyone to check this out, especially the audiobook that she reads herself. I'm sure it's fantastic. 
However, of course, look up your own personal content warnings to make sure that you can comfortably read this. It does go into detail about some pretty dark things, so keep an eye on yourself and make sure you're comfortable reading this. I personally read this with a friend just to make sure that we were both okay while reading it and we even warned each other when the eating disorder talk and other dark things started to occur. So that was very helpful in my opinion. I took the hair out. I don't think I liked it. I might try it again when my hair is washed, but we'll see. I feel like I am just lacking the, what's it called, uh, layering? Face framing bangs? Maybe that's why that doesn't look as great. I was trying to base my hair off of a look that Holly Madison did, and of course she has Barbie hair that I don't have because she works really hard on her hair. So who knows, I can try that later when I do more with it. So as for what I am reading next, I have taken out Second Chances, which is the Batman comic that introduces Jason Todd and shows his new position as the new Robin. And I'm looking forward to that because that's the first official comic with Jason Todd in it. That's very, very exciting. And I also plan to read the second book in the um, Get a Blank Blank Brown series. I don't know what it's officially called by Talia Hibbert. I read the first one last year for a Valentine's Day read, and I'm going to be reading the sequel Take a Hint, Danny Brown. If I'm right, that's awesome. So I will be reading that next, so stay tuned. poster. It's Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights. I had nowhere else to put it, so it's right there in front of my mirror. So I can remember that life is uh, pretty fucked up. So here we are again at a mini update. I have managed to read what I promised to read. So I read Second Chances, which is the collection of Jason's first appearances in the official Batman and Detective Comics comics. Mind you, this is Jason Todd post-crisis. He was definitely involved in pre-crisis, but he was just a clone of Dick Grayson. So here we are, Jason Todd's proper introduction with his different backstory than just being one of the flying Todds and having the exact same backstory as Dick. So I really, really enjoyed these. A lot of them are very silly one-offs where they're just defeating a random villain, but they showed a lot of Jason Todd's character. I really enjoyed um, what they immediately wanted to do by changing his backstory. They knew immediately what he stood for, and I can see the pattern of where he eventually leads in a couple of years in the comics when they kill him. So I really enjoyed his character. I liked his change of pace from Dick Grayson. I liked their meeting each other, Dick and Jason, and getting along for their first mission. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the tension between Dick and Bruce during that time. And I enjoyed how um, Jason is trying really hard to be like a well-studious boy and he has little insecurities and he has a different way of even speaking. I really enjoy that. It's refreshing to see Jason being written 
pretty consistently because later on, aside from Under the Red Hood, he's... So even though they're pretty silly and pretty cheesy 80s comics, I still gave the collection five stars because I really enjoyed it and I, there was a lot of fun in it. I am also listening to the audiobook of Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I am like 60% of the way through it. So far, it is totally harmless. It is that uh, the main character, Danny, is trapped in a building during a routine emergency like exit thing at a um, university and her friend and security guard who works there ends up saving her from an elevator and carrying her out like fireman style and they get caught on camera and it kind of goes viral as like oh couple goals so they have to pretend to date so the guy can have like more people interested in the like little community kind of charity thing he runs with sports and stuff so far not bad nothing wrong with it typical romance stuff i'm not bothered by anything in it it's just going so cool 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 it's not my favorite romance i've ever read but so far it's pretty solid and finally 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 um at the moment i have gotten my hands on legends and lattes by travis baldry which is this huge phenomenon that's been happening the past couple years with this book and this series it is a cozy fantasy and the vibes and the cafe and the ugh. anyway i finally got my hands on it because at the library it has been on hold for like six months so I finally got a hold of that, and I don't see the giant appeal of this book. When it's talking about the main character, um, Viv, building a coffee shop from the ground up, we mean literally. We see her go and get the lease. We see her rebuild the, the old building. We see her ordering the coffee machine. We see her ordering all the ingredients. We see her, like, ah... Uh, it's so boring. Business is boring. Doing that is boring. I'm finally at a part where the coffee shop is thriving and she's got employees. The employees aren't bad as characters. I will die for Thimble, by the way, the little mouse baker. I'm going to die for him. Anyway, that's the only part of the book that I like. The rest of it, there is little to no conflict aside for some people who are like, hey, you should pay your monthly dues. You don't want to get caught in the bad part of, I don't know, if is it some sort of mafia style, like, owning of everybody in town? I don't care. And she has, like, her guild that keeps coming back, and she's like, I used to be a bad orc warrior person who fights people, and now I just want to settle down. Okay. I don't know, there's just not enough in this story for me personally. I do enjoy that it is a quieter fantasy that always is welcome. And, you know, fantasy world building for me always just goes through one ear and out the other. So I can appreciate that this is very grounded. I can really appreciate it. But it is not captivating me. It is not these ultimate cozy vibes that everyone's, like, spewing it out to be. And this is, like, the biggest issue with it for me. This is a book about a coffee shop and a character who is baking things in that coffee shop and it's getting very very popular like he is making cinnamon cake and he is making these little like what are they biscotti st style things but the descriptions of the coffee and the baked goods aren't making me hungry they aren't tempting me to go make a coffee or to go find a coffee or cinnamon cake that's what the whole point of fantasy food is. You know when you're reading Lord of the Rings or some other fantasy and they're talking about the stupid food that they eat, like the stews and the roasted potatoes and the bread and the butter and like the cheese? I always want that crap when I'm reading fantasy. And this book is just, yeah, the coffee was good. I can literally be pressured into making a second coffee by just seeing someone drinking a coffee and I go, ooh, I could go for a second coffee. This book is giving me nothing. That's so crazy to me. This book has just been talked up so much, I think, that I came into it with higher expectations and I don't like doing that in books. So everyone just stop hyping shit, blowing it out of proportion. Crazy, crazy. So yeah, that was my rambly update. I'm so rambly right now. I don't know why. I think because I'm starting to feel better. I had like five days in a row where just allergies were bogging me down, but now we've got a nice heavy layer of snow back in my city, so I'm feeling way better. So stay tuned for the rest of my month. I still have a few more books to read.
here we go. We're going to do a super quick update. I finished both of those stories that I mentioned reading in the earlier clip. So take a hint, Danny Brown was totally solid, totally fine as an audiobook. Great romance, good relationship development. Conflict was normal. They didn't do like a horrible miscommunication thing where it just seems totally out of left field. It seemed very natural. And the conclusion was solid, so it gets a three star from me. Not good, not bad, normal. And as for Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, I'm giving that two stars because it wasn't as compelling to me as it is to other people. I of course loved Thimble the Mouse and I thought his little arc of baking stuff and being all cute and adorable and drinking coffee, I liked him very much. I thought the arc was fine enough of the main character learning how to start a business and how to allow people into her life and how the conflict that happens in the book gets resolved. All very fine. The book just wasn't for me. I'm not going to continue reading anything from this sort of genre again. I tried. I thought it would be an easier way to absorb fantasy, but it just does not have enough going for me. It is a wonderful little story, a little break in the genre for people who are fans of fantasy. I've been trying to enjoy fantasy for years now. I don't know if I will truly find anything that I like aside from, you know, vampires in a historical setting. So stay tuned for my final wrap up as well as me probably putting in two more books into this video. Stay tuned. And here we are finally at the final wrap up of the month. So for this month, I also read eight books. So let's just get into quickly wrapping those up and giving my ratings. For my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime book this month, I read Beloved by Toni Morrison, and I only ended up giving that two stars. While I think it was a very well done, evocative, and creepy story, it just wasn't to my personal tastes, and I don't find myself looking to reread it or return to it. I then read A Long Time Dead by Samantha Breger, and I ended up giving that one four stars, while at the beginning I was very turned off by the weird writing style. I eventually got used to it and I found myself immersed in a very character heavy vampire story featuring a diverse cast of queer women and others and I really really enjoyed the conversations, um, the discussion of the relationship, and just what they were capable of doing in this smaller plot. I really, really enjoyed it. It was an excellent vampire standalone. I then read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, and this is of course a five-star read. This is a very hard to read book, but it is so well done, so well written. I couldn't help but call it a favorite. I don't know if I will ever reread it just because the content is so difficult, but this is an excellent story. I am so glad that Jeanette McCurdy was able to release this to the public and go through her own life and story with such grace, with such wit, and with such clarity. This is just an excellent memoir. This might be one of my favorites that I have ever, ever read. I then read Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, and I ended up giving that one two stars. Aside from Thimble the Baking Mouse, I just didn't find myself enjoying this very much. It was a little bit too boring, and I had some trouble connecting with the story ultimately. I'm trying really hard to find a sort of fantasy genre or type of fantasy book that I can enjoy, but so far other than like Lord of the Rings and a little bit Game of Thrones, I haven't really found anything. I then read Batman Second Chances by Max Collins et al, and I gave that one five stars. It's not the perfect series of comic issues. A lot of them are very just one-off issues, random stuff going on, and it still has a lot of that 80s cheese that then tries to subsequently also show this 80s darkness because of Frank Miller and Alan Moore. So the juxtaposition of like cutesy comics to like this harsh serial killer who threw women in the dumpsters ultimately didn't work for me, but it is Jason Todd and it is his 
post-crisis origins, so I can't help but love it. I love the dynamics and the building of his character, so I ultimately enjoyed it so much that I gave it five stars. I then listened to the audiobook of Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, and that gets a solid three star from me. Wonderful series, wonderful series of romances. Um, the plots that they get themselves into aren't too contrived, the writing is very lovely, and you get to know the characters, the side characters, the whole world very very well. Never complained about a single thing in the book. I very much enjoyed it, and I will probably read that third book about the third sister next year. I then read Batman the Cult by Jim Starlin et al, and that one also just gets three stars from me. Very convoluted plot, and a lot of it was muddied down by this very, like, boring sort of way to tell the story where it was all done through news reports and a lot of the pictures in the comic were just the reporter's face as she spoke and it was just blah 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 blah. It was very annoying but I did like the little story of Batman getting indoctrinated into a cult and Robin trying to save him. Very very cool solid story. I wish it wasn't so bogged down by all the boring stuff and like the bad execution of exposition. And finally I ended my month by reading Barbie Four Decades of Fashion, Fantasy, and Fun by Marco Toza. This was a book that allegedly wanted to talk about the four decades, that being the 50s to the 90s of Barbie's history, but the book instead wants to only focus on the origins of Barbie and her 1950s and 1960s entire study of like fashion, of couture, of oat looks or whatever they're called, and I wish the book just stuck to that because that part was obviously very well researched. The author clearly had a lot to talk about in regards to how they created this fashion doll and how she was a fashion icon, both inspired by the culture and making culture. The last like 25 pages of this book like to shoehorn in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, which are huge changes in the development of Barbie. She went from being a teen fashion model to eventually showing that uh, women could have jobs in her various outfits. But by the 80s, she was all about Hollywood, all about glamour, all about luxury and consumerism and space and a lot more things that I can't tackle in this little clip. But this book just breezes past that. They show one picture of Totally Hair Barbie, the most popular sold doll in the company's history. One picture of her. That's ridiculous. And then for the 90s, they just show, oh yeah, she's changing for the 90s. Talk about it. Like, if you wanted to just make a book about the 50s and 60s of like her first decade, do that. Don't package this book like it's gonna be talking about all of these dolls, all of these dolls from the 80s and 90s, because all they do is show pictures and say, yep, these exist. Meanwhile, the book is bombarded with pictures from the 60s and the 50s. So just of these random looks and random discussions of only books from the 50s and 60s, be more cohesive and market this properly. That's the only problem with it. So it got three stars from me. I just wish that it had been honest from the start. So that's it. That was my month of February. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos in the next month. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.